Changes to the Earth's Surface by Liam and Ian. Changes constantly happen to the Earth's surface. There are many different ways that this can happen. I do that all the time. Well then tell us all about how volcanoes change the Earth's surface. Volcanoes are one of the things that change the Earth's surface. Volcanoes can cause natural disasters. The ash that they spew out covers the landscape and destroys wildlife. Plants can get covered by ash and die, but this is also very good at preserving things, just like Mount Vesuvius did with Pompeii. Ash clouds that volcanoes spew out can move up to 125 miles per hour and will burn and disintegrate anything that gets in the way. Good job! But that is not the only thing that changes the Earth's surface, right? Of course not. I am getting very impatient. May I explain what role I take in changing the Earth's surface? Yes, of course. Thank you. Earthquakes are another way the Earth's surface can change. The power of an earthquake is measured by the Richter scale. A quake of 3.0 magnitude is 10 times as powerful as a quake of 2.0 magnitude and is 100 times as powerful as a quake of 1.0 magnitude. Earthquakes affect the surface of the Earth by making plates move. For example, an earthquake in the middle of the ocean would cause a tsunami. A tsunami is a big wave that would be caused by the moving ground. If an earthquake were on land, it could trigger a landslide or an avalanche. It could also cause damage to the human society. Perfecto! What's next? Me, of course, I've been dying to tell you the significant importance of water and how it helps change the Earth's surface. Can I go? Go ahead. Water is another way the Earth's surface changes. Over time, water erodes any matter in the way. Water at the beach is constantly pounding against the shore, eroding the sand, rock, and shells that make up the beach. Sea arches are made when water erodes the weakest rock in the middle, so only the arch is left. Canyons are also carved by rivers and other natural weathering. Bravo! What's next? Me! Can I talk about physical weathering, my favorite topic? Of course! That's what you're in here for! Okay, here I go. Physical weathering is the process where rocks get weathered down physically. The rocks get worn by wind, water, earthquakes, and avalanches. If water seeps in a crack in a rock and freezes, the rock will break because water expands when it freezes, so the ice inside the rock will force the rock apart. Wind is also another important factor of physical weathering. After many millions of years, it can break rocks and pile sand dunes. Amazing! Now, I hope we have saved the best for last. It's my favorite way to end presentations. Hey! Never mind. Who's up next? Me. Can I go? Yes, make it good. This is the grand finale. Okay, I will try my best. Chemical weathering is the process that happens when chemical formations of a rock change. Rocks can go through this process when acid rain falls on them. Acid rain is water that is full, full of minerals. Acid rain is water that seeps through soil full of minerals. When it reaches rock, it will drop minerals onto the rock, and then the rock will be chemically weathered. We hope you have enjoyed our presentation.